Um, good evening to you all once again. I welcome you to our virtual teaching and video lessons. Um, subscribe to the channel and, and also I recommend it to your friends. In our previous discussion, we looked at the religious um, practices or features of the West African forest and coastal states. We are still on the West African forest and coastal states. We've been looking at the features for the past weeks and um, today we are looking at the last features of the West African forest and coastal states and basically we are looking at their political system or organization. So the political features of the West African forest and coastal states. So let's take a look at our lesson objectives. So by the end of the lesson, um, you should be able to examine the political features of the people of West African forest and coastal states. What were some of their political features? You know, you know, as we have been doing for the other civilizations. So quickly we look we begin with their uh, political features so the political organization of the uh, coastal states of west africa was mainly you know a monarchical the powerful kings at the helm of affairs so monarchical states we've been talking about this in all the almost all the civilizations that we have treated now these kings who were appointed by the by the king maker so uh, were believed to be earthly incarnation of the cause of the land and take notice that almost all the Africans, African civilization we have looked at saw their kings as an incarnation of their gods, right? But here in West African forest and coastal states, they had king makers, people whose sole responsibility was to appoint the king. Now their position as kings were considered as divine. This added to their power and authority to rule over their people. In view of this, their pronouncement and judgment were not subject to challenge by the people, since that was the tantamount to opposing the legitimate will of the cause. And I believe we have been talking about some of these um, uh, perceptions about their king in almost all the civilizations that we have been looking at. Good. So let's take a look at the next feature. Um, the next political feature was that the coastal states established a highly centralized system of government. So the centralization of public administration and centralization in the sense that all power emanated from one person. So power was vested into one kingdom, one person. And by this, the powers for the running of the kingdom were vested in a body of authority located at the capital of the kingdom. So that we can compare this to a Ghanaian system whereby power emanates from Accra or Flagstaff House. That is a centralized system. Okay, now despite the vastness of some of the states, the centralization of the administration worked out smoothly owing to the administrative skills possessed by these government officials. For example, the Asante had their administrative capital at Kumasi. So you realize that Asante's, the Asante Empire had their administrative capital. So at Kumasi, and all powers and decrees came from Kumasi. That's the Asante name. But don't forget that Asantes were even ruling Elmina in those days. They were ruling Adansiprasu in those days. They were even ruling, they even had part of um, 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 Côte d'Ivoire. Okay? They even had Northern region. But look at the vastness, but still they managed to run the empire smoothly. And so centralization, of course, uh, they had that centralized system of government. I hope I'm clear. Let's then look at some more of their um, um, political features. Again, the, the political organization of the coastal states were hierarchically organized. Um, among so hierarchy, when we say something is hierarchy, meaning we have um, it is arranged in that order from the highest to the lowest. All right. So among other things, there was more or less bureaucracy, okay, or bureaucracy of seizing government officials to see to the day-to-day -day 
administration. Now, one of the government of these officials were tax collectors, who were the most important of them all. The government officials supervised developmental projects among others. So, hierarchically organized here means that they had seasoned government officials who were appointed to, you know, administer the day-to-day -day administration of the empires. And among all of them, the most important of all of them was the tax collectors. So the tax collectors were part of the hierarchy. When we compare it to the political hierarchy of Ghana, you realize that the, the president is at the top of the hierarchy. Next down, the president, the vice president. Next down, the vice president, I think is the uh, minister of uh, the speaker of parliament. Next down, the speaker of parliament is the supreme uh, called Chief Justice, and it comes down like that. So when this is not there, that is there. And all these people there had separate, you know, features, up to the ministers, up to the MPs, up to the DCs, that is the hierarchically organization we are talking about. So, but here, among the West African Forest and Coastal States, the most important person or government official was a tax collector, but indicates that they had government officials at every level seeing or seeking to the day-to-day -day administration of the kingdoms. Again, the states of West African uh, forest and coastal also had vassal states. They had vassal states and we have explained vassal states uh, in, our, in our previous discussion so I will not waste so much time here. The vassal states after being conquered were made integral parts of the existing states. In some cases, there were paramount chiefs in charge of these uh, vassal states. They were responsible for the king for efficient running of the states under their jurisdiction. So you realize that when there is a war and the state is being conquered, after the conquering of the state, what happens is that that state becomes part of the metropolitan state. So for instance, if Asante conquers Elmina in a war, Elmina then becomes part of the Asante Empire. So Elmina is run from Kumasi. You understand? So Elmina becomes a vassal state. And in most instances, the role of these vassal states were to you know, pay taxes every year to the, their masters. That is the Utunfo or the one who conquered them. And we've talked about them in several locations in our discussion. Let's take a look at the last two. Um, um, the political features of the West African forest and coastal states. Now, to also ensure a smooth running of the government, there was the, there was the institution of a system of tribute and taxation. And you know, you can, the, no society can survive without taxation. And that is how come in Ghana, everything you buy, there is tax on it. Your salary, there is tax on it. When you are going to buy things from the market, it has been taxed. When you are going to clear your car from the post, you pay dues, it has been taxed. Everything in this country is taxed. Tax is good, but <laughs> taxing everything is weird. Because you can't tax me. Everything, electricity, you are taxed. Water bill, you are taxed. Everything about you in the country, even when you are working, you are taxed. How does that by the way? Tax is good, but then when you tax too much, you bring, you end up bringing hardship to your people. Now, taxes and tributes were also collected from the vassal states. Good. So the taxes were, as I indicated earlier, the vassal states were made to bring uh, their taxes every year and tribute, and they took the form of gold dust. So you brought gold to them. The the proceeds from the taxation and tribute formed the economic bedrock of these coastal states. So they were taking. You know, like taxes from the other states, okay, and that was what they used to run the uh, economy of their states. Good. Lastly, we are looking at the, the political organization through the establishment of standing army. Of course, no, there isn't any political organization without an army. So, if you have been observing all the, I mean, political organizations of the various. African civilizations we have looked at, they have, or they had a standing army. Now, depending upon the discretion of the of the particular political leader, a form of a standing army was maintained for both national defense and political expansion. 
So the, it, it depends on the, on the discretion of the leader. Uh, the military was formed for two purposes. One, for national defense, and then two, for political expansion. So national defense here means that the military was formed to protect the people against foreign invasions. For political expansion here means that the military will be used to conquer other lesser states so that the empire can continue to grow. Now, uh, the home states, uh, for example, maintain a professional army which aided immensely in their growth and expansion. And that is an example. They always give an example if possible. During tribal wars, the king served as commander-in-chief of the armed forces. Uh, in this capacity, they could declare war, lead the army in battle, and appoint the various laws in the event of war. So that was basically the role of the kings. They were the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. And they had, a, they had the capacity to declare war, to lead the army in battle, and to appoint the various laws in the event of war. So you, 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 you again compare this to what we are having today as an European way. You realize that the president today is still the army commander and the president is equivalent to the chief of the country. You understand? And so Africans, this goes a long way to re-emphasize the fact that Africans were highly civilized. All what the Europeans brought to us was what we were already doing. But you see, they systematically made us to, to, to believe that we had nothing, we knew nothing, and therefore, what they have brought to us is the blueprint, which, of course, is wrong. It was never a, book, a blueprint, and it was never different from what we here, you know, were doing, or our leaders were doing, the same way that they also came to do the same thing. They only changed the names. Good. We bring our lesson to an end. And this is a quite four years ago question. And uh, the political teachers, they have asked you. And I hope in your time, if they require you to um, outline the same four features, you will be able to even outline more than four and explain it to get to your mark. Wish you good well and good luck. Subscribe to the channel and again, recommend it to your friends. We shall meet again some other time. Bye.